A very good morning to all of you. I, Richa Batla, welcome you all in today's webinar, hosted by Government Girls College, Sector 42, Chandigarh, in collaboration with Cambridge University Press India, for our ongoing global campaign, Anything with Cambridge in English. Now, I would request my colleague, Mr. Vineet Mehra, to please initiate the session. Thank you, Richa, and good morning, everyone on board. I welcome you all to today's session on skills for social business communication. Cambridge University Press has always been a front runner for the last so many years and decades, I would say, in helping learners build brighter futures. And we are excited to be a part of this session being hosted by Postgraduate Government Girls College, Sector 42, Chandigarh. This session will be taken by Professor Ruchi Koshe, who is an associate professor at Department of English, Sri Ram College of Commerce, University of Delhi and has a vast experience in helping learners and trainers in excelling their English language skills. We are sure this will be a full of, uh, session full of learning. The session would be followed by a small but a very useful presentation by my colleague Priya Kapoor who heads product at ELT CUP India, followed by a validity session by Professor Poona Magarwal from Postgraduate Government Girls College, Sector 42, Chandigarh, who has an experience of more than 32 years and unparalleled contribution to edu education. Now, may I request uh, Professor Ruchi to please begin the session. Thank you. Thank you, Vineet. Thank you, the team at CUP and the Government Girls College Chandigarh for giving me this opportunity to be the resource person for today's webinar. And I extend a very warm welcome to all the participants. And I look forward to a very fruitful interaction today. Now, if you will just give me one second so that I can share my screen with you. Is the slide visible to everybody? Is the slide visible? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay, now uh, the topic for today's webinar is very interesting, extremely relevant, and also a topic that most of us are familiar with, aren't we? I mean, we all communicate. We speak to a number of people for a variety of reasons on a very regular basis. And yet, ironically, most of us want to improve our communication skills and become better communicators. Have you ever wondered why? The reason behind it is that communication is a very, very complex phenomenon. And we shall talk more about it as we go along. But what I want you to right now do is to look at the quotations that will appear on the next slide and read them carefully because I have an activity planned for you. So here are the quotations. One good thing about quotes is that they beautifully display the art of brevity. Each quote is saying something about communication. All right, here we go. Now let's do a quick recall activity. I will give you 30 seconds. What I want you to do is, I want you to recall one idea about communication that caught your attention in any of the five quotations that you read in the previous slide. Okay, and you can um, send me your responses via the chat box. All right, yes, so I've started receiving your responses. Communication leads to human connection, okay. Uh, it is illusionary, all right. Mm, should be open-ended, yes. Honesty, okay. Uh, okay, leads to, lack of communication leads to death. All right, uh, all right, thank you. And more responses coming in. Uh, well, thank you so much for this enthusiastic participation right at the outset of the webinar. And I hope you've noticed one thing the ability to assimilate a piece of information 
and to be able to recall it and reproduce it is also a very important skill of communication. And I'm so happy that we practiced it right in the beginning of the webinar. Now, I was talking about the communication process being very complex. Some of the salient features of communication also serve as its potential barriers. And I'll just explain how. The first very important characteristic of communication is that it is goal oriented. Okay, whenever we speak to someone, there is a purpose behind it. We may be asking for some information. We may be sharing some knowledge. Uh, there may be a query or we may be registering a complaint, but it is never devoid of purpose. Now, a lot of students of mine uh, pose this question to me when I teach them in the class and they say, ma'am, what about the kind of conversation we have with a fellow passenger while traveling in a metro? We don't really have an aim behind doing that. Now, my answer to that would be that, yes, consciously, maybe you think there's no aim, but subconsciously, the objective is to while the time away. Okay, uh, you, you want to be entertained. So please remember, effective communication is always purposeful, never purposeless. The next important characteristic of communication is that it is a two-way process. Participants involved in the process of communication will constantly give and take. The moment communication becomes one-sided, it ceases to be effective. Okay, and again, the problem arises when we participate in discussions and we want to have all the say, we don't give an opportunity for others to, uh, you know, interact with us. Uh, you know, it leads to communication breakdown. Communication is unrepeatable. Okay, it is very similar to clicking photographs. No two pictures are alike. Similarly, no two acts of communication are similar in nature. Also, communication is irreversible, okay? You can't undo what you've done once. So you've uttered a word, you've written something, it's gone to the receiver. And that is why very often you will hear people say, oh, no, 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 I didn't mean that. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, my intention was, now, now all these qualifiers come in because uh, probably people are not happy with their first response. They want to modify it. But once that response has reached the receiver, it's done. That communicative act is over. Communication is always context specific. Now, what do I mean by context? The four dimensions of context, the physical setting, uh, the, the, the timing of the communicative act, culture, and the socio-psychological dimension. Now, let's take them one by one. What do I mean by physical setting? Physical setting means the actual space in which, uh, the actual surroundings in which communication happens. For instance, right now, the communication between us is via the virtual space and it has its own dynamics. Now imagine if this interaction were happening in a classroom with four walls, chairs, tables and a whiteboard. The dynamics would change considerably. The next dimension is the psychological state of mind of the participants. If you are uh, you know, preoccupied with something right now, while you are you know, in the seminar, in the webinar, maybe the concentration will not be there, right? Is that so? Yes, very often it happens with most of us, okay? And I'm reminded of this uh, wonderful advertisement of a site for property. It's called 99 Acres. I'm sure uh, most of you uh, must have watched this advertisement on television. So there is this property dealer who's obsessed with, uh, you know, uh, buying and selling land. And, uh, you know, so, so several situations are shown. And whenever this property dealer uh, overhears any conversation, he just latches on the words that, you know, that are there on his mind. For instance, he overhears somebody saying flat. Now, those people are talking about a flat tire, but immediately he turns around and says, 2 BHK or 3 BHK, okay? So, so our psychological state of mind can actually make communication or mar 
communication. Okay, the next is culture. Very, very important component of communication. Now, given the contemporary uh, scenario, most of the companies are multinationals, multicultural, uh, multilingual, and therefore an understanding of other cultures become very important. Now, if you don't have that understanding, it may lead to miscommunication. And again, let me uh, substantiate this by giving you a real life example. I don't know if you uh, happen to notice this Facebook post that went viral about a few months ago. I think this was University of Illinois. And uh, so there is this Indian student and on the day of his convocation, he goes up on the stage and he tries to touch the feet of his American professor. Now, it is his way of showing respect to him, but that professor is startled, so he tries to move away. And there is uh, another Indian professor on the stage who explains to him that, you know, it's, he doesn't mean to be offensive. It is just his way of, uh, you know, respecting you like we do in India. So the culture, the cultural component becomes very important in communication. And last, but certainly not the least, the temporal dimension. When is the communication taking place? So in terms of the real timing, you know, the real time of the day when that communication is happening. For instance, right now in <coughs> India, it is 11.15 uh, a.m. Whereas, uh, in England, it would be about 6, 6.30. Now, if I am communicating with someone from a different time zone, is it a comfortable thing for the person, for the recipient or not? So we'll have to keep that in mind. The other aspect of time is the timing of the communicative act, okay? For instance, I want to apologize to someone. Now, am I extending that apology right after I've committed a mistake or am I apologizing to that person right before I want to seek a favor from him makes a whole lot of difference. Okay. So the timing of communication is also very important. Last but not the least, the level of formality involved. Okay. Now in most social events, you know, we can be informal. We can use colloquial language. We can use a lot of gestures. But the moment we move to the business context, uh, the level of formality increases. Now, let me substantiate this with an example again. Now, supposing if I were to introduce myself to you and we met somewhere in the corridor or on the street, okay, or in the cafeteria, okay, I would look at you and say, hi, Ruchi here. How are you doing? Okay, something like that. But if I am introducing myself in a business situation in a business context, I will be like something like this. The introduction will be like, uh, hello, I'm Dr. Ruchi Kaushik, uh, Associate Professor at Department of English, SRCC, University of Delhi. Now notice the difference in terms of the excitement, in terms of the use of gestures, and in terms of the language used in terms of the content of the introduction. So all these things, as I said, if they're not done properly, may act as potential barriers. All right, now let us look at the various skills that are required in different business contexts. Now, if you notice on the slide, the first few situations mentioned are where listening and speaking skills are important. Whereas the last three, would primarily require good reading and writing skills, okay? So according to the context, the skill that is required changes. Now within that, now if you look at the set which requires more of listening and speaking, even within that, there are differences. For instance, the kind of skill you would require to do well in an interview would be very different from say the skill that you would require to carry out a good group discussion. Okay, when you're discussing something in a group, you are talking on the same, all of us are talking on the same topic. You have to make sure that you don't start debating, you discuss, you comprehend other people's opinions, uh, you appreciate them, 
And at the same time, you are able to lead uh, or, or, you know, sort of reach a logical conclusion. Whereas in an interview, you have to be very careful because you may be asked a variety of questions. And if you're not able to understand the question, you can't give an appropriate reply. So as I said, the skill set, the sub skill set in each of the business context in terms of communication will also vary. And uh, this is something that we need to be careful about. Okay, now largely at the macrocosmic level, I would like to talk about the, as, as I very fondly call them, 11 C's of communication, a minor adaptation of the seven C's developed uh, ages ago. All right, the first point is that a good effective message is a clear message, okay, which is without any ambiguity. You can understand very, very easily what the message means. And that is the kind of message we should aspire to create and convey. The second important thing is completeness, okay? A message should have all the necessary details. Imagine I invited you to a party at my house. I give you the date, I give you the address, but I don't give you the time. How will you plan? Okay, how will you respond? You will be full of questions, okay? Concreteness, very important, okay? Uh, a concrete message is a solid message, which is based on a lot of information substantiated with data, a lot of data, especially in the business context. If you're making a point, you have to substantiate it with statistical data. Conciseness, very important. To the point, your, your communication should be to the point and should not be very, very huge. Because when we speak or write a lot, what happens is that we lose focus. And also, let's remember, everybody's hard pressed for time. So people will tend to ignore it if it's a very, very long thing that you are trying to communicate to them. Correctness, okay? Uh, not only is it important to draft the message in a manner which is correct, but even the language that you use has to be correct. Okay, if it is incorrect, it may lead to a lot of miscommunication. Consideration, very important. Now, what do I mean by that? Consideration means having the you attitude. Okay, that is you keep the recipient or the receiver uppermost in your mind. Okay, uh, if you do that, uh, chances are that your recipient will be able to understand your, your um, you know, message better. Again, let me substantiate it with the help of an example. William Shakespeare's plays are taught to all kinds of students, whether it is a student uh, who studies in the fifth or the sixth standard, or it is a student who is doing his PhD. Okay, now the teacher will pitch the Shakespearean play at the level of the recipient. So if the teacher is teaching um, Hamlet to a fifth grader, the way the play will be transacted will be very different from uh, how it will be, uh, you know, deconstructed by a PhD supervisor for her or his research student. Okay. Now, the next very important point which makes communication effective is the use of curtsy. Your message should be polite, even if you are frustrated, and angry, and you want to give it back to the person, you can do that. But politeness is something that you can't compromise on. You can't be abusive, okay? So you can be polite, but you can show your displeasure. Creativity very important to be able to think out of the box. Okay. How do I do it differently? How do I phrase it differently? What kind of idea can I generate? Okay. Consistency and credibility actually go hand in hand. You have to be rational and logical in whatever you are communicating. And that in fact builds your credibility. You know, people start trusting you if they know that there is some rationale in what you're saying. And last, but certainly not the least, in the business context, competitiveness is something which is a very essential skill. You should be able to say something in a manner where you have an edge over the others, okay?
And these skills come in very handy in interviews. I remember, again, I'm giving you a real life example. Uh, in one of the interviews uh, at an MBA institute, all the candidates were asked the same question. They were asked to tell them uh, the color of the wall behind them, okay? And almost like 95% of them said the same thing. It is the same color as the rest of the three walls are, okay? Or somebody said white or yellow, whatever. Now, the candidate who got selected gave a very creative answer. Imagine what he said. He said, I believe in looking ahead in life. So what has gone behind me is past. Imagine, imagine the level of creativity. All right, now that takes me to the next slide where I really want you to listen to a business leader, Indra Nui, uh, uh, you know, former CEO of PepsiCo, talking about the importance of communication. Just listen to what she has to say. Uh, you can be very, very confident, but if you're not willing to speak out, if you're not willing to have the confidence based on your knowledge, what's the point? Right? You just roll over. The courage and confidence are very important. The third is communication skills. You cannot overinvest in communication skills, written and oral communications, because as a leader, you constantly have to mobilize the troops. I can tell you when I first came to the United States, I used to debate and I used to be on debating teams. I used to speak so fast because culturally I grew up in an environment where people spoke very fast. Fortunately, Yale had a requirement that unless you pass the communications course, you couldn't graduate from the first year to the second year in business school. I flunked the first time I took the communications course. So over summer, I took it again, which was the best thing that happened because I learned to sync my brain with my, my output from my mouth. So I started to slow down what I was saying. Huge difference. So I encourage all of you, invest in communication skills. Critically important. Uh, the four. All right. Now, uh, Nui, of course, uh, talks about the problem that she faced when she went abroad because she was you know, used to speaking very, very fast, very quickly. Okay, now some of the other English language related barriers that we may come across in life are uh, very limited vocabulary, okay, or uh, very, very limited uh, exposure to sentence structure. So we may get stuck, we want to say a lot of things, but sometimes we make problems, uh, you know, we may, may make mistakes uh, related to tenses or some other kind of mistake, okay. Uh, Lack of confidence, again, arising because you are not proficient in the language is, uh, you know, another area that you, that you and I need to work on. Uh, inappropriate register, okay? That's the next point, that when uh, you are not sure about the difference between formally used language and the kind of language that we may use when we are interacting informally, and you mix up then that acts as a very, very uh, big barrier. You know, for instance, students have started using texts to communicate with the teachers. Okay, again, a real life example. And very often, uh, you know, I get a text where I am not sure if I am a friend who's being texted to or a teacher. Because uh, I remember, I mean, I, I would never sort of say a hi to the teacher and what's up uh, what's up? I can't use that with the teacher. I will always say, I hope it is an appropriate time uh, to uh, communicate with you. And this is why I, I, I'm texting you. So, you know, this, this uh, difference is something that we need to be very careful about. Okay, overconfidence. Now, a lot of students who are very, very knowledgeable in their core area, you know, suffer from overconfidence. This is not important. Now, let me say, no matter how good you are in your subject area, if you're unable to communicate that knowledge, if you're unable to share that knowledge with others, what is that knowledge for? So language skills are very important. And poor listening skills, again, arising because of our limited exposure to language. Now, there's one thing that I want to clarify here. When we talk of effective communication, language is just one component of it and 
language in which you're communicating. So if I'm communicating in Hindi, I should be proficient in that. If it's Bengali, then in Bengali. However, having said that, I will also underline the importance of English language because um, we all know that English serves as one of the most important linked languages. Okay. And according to several uh, recent surveys and reports, uh, it has been found out that it is also one of the topmost skills that prospective employers are looking for in their uh, employees. Okay, so uh, you need to be a proficient user of English language. Uh, these were just some samples uh, of uh, very interesting signages that you come across. So at the airport, in one of those uh, shops in, on the street, okay, very interesting, but very uh, bad use of language. All right, now what are the strategies to improve our communication skills? The first one is uh, improving your listening, speaking, writing, and uh, you know, reading skills, very important. The second is to improve your body language. Now, sometimes you may have come across people who are very good as far as their content is concerned, but they have a horrible body language. So they're underconfident, uh, you know, um, uh, hesitant. So until and unless you have a body language, you should be able to inspire the people that you talk to. And body language is something that can certainly be worked upon. The next very important area uh, which makes communication effective are your paralinguistic features. Now, what do we mean by paralinguistic features? Paralinguistic um, elements uh, primarily are about how you say what you're saying. Okay, so for instance, if I'm saying move out of here. Okay, that is the sentence I will speak out. Move out of here. Move out of here. Move out of here. Move out of here. <gasps> move out of here. Now, now notice that every time I'm speaking the sentence, there is something that I'm communicating. So I'm pausing in between. I'm stressing on certain words. I am differing the, uh, the, 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 the tonality is different in every uh, you know, sentence. And therefore, the meaning that is coming out is entirely different. Uh, we've already talked about how communication is actually building a dialogue and not monologuing. Uh, again, understanding points of view. I talked about this when I was talking about the group discussions. Offer positive criticism, very important. Whenever you give a feedback to somebody while you interact with them, it is very easy, simple, and it comes so naturally to us to say, hey, I don't agree with you. I'm, I'm sorry. That's wrong. What are you saying? Now, instead of saying all of these, if we were to just change what we say to something like, well, I appreciate your point of view. However, I differ. And then you can say whatever you have to. But if you just soften it a bit and you're more accommodating about what the other person is saying, it makes uh, the communication channel widen and uh, you know, sort of grow. All right, be empathetic. Again, try and understand other people's situations. Try being in their shoes and that will really help you communicate better. Last but not the least, be flexible, okay? Uh, if you're rigid and you say, well, I have said this, full stop. I communicated to the best of my ability. It is your problem you did not understand. It will not take you far. Please be receptive to criticism. Please try and change your communication style depending upon the need of your listeners, audience, or receivers. All right, now all of this, uh, you know, makes sense uh, in terms of theory. Okay, in terms of points that I've uh, illustrated, but you can actually only develop these skills if you have hands-on experience. And that is why we conduct workshops for the same. Now, uh, because of paucity of time, I can't do that, but I can certainly give you an activity to work on. Okay, so that's skill-based activity one on creativity. Now, 
you will see a picture on the next slide you will see a picture of an object which we use in our daily lives now what i want you to do is i want you to list as many alternative uses of this object as you can imagine in the next 30 seconds and remember there are no wrong answers okay and you can send them to me uh, in the chat box whatever your ideas are all right so here we go here's the object All right, uh, okay. Okay, to tie our hair, to seal packets, yeah, to store things, okay. Yeah. All right, uh, okay. So the responses are coming now, very interestingly, the first couple of responses that have come have been very conventional responses, okay? And it is not our fault because as we grow up, we are taught to be logical and uh, somehow our creativity suffers, okay? Now imagine I'm going to read out some of the responses that have come to me in other workshops, you know, the full length, you know, full fledged workshops that we have on creativity, okay? You can use rubber bands as exercising equipment, you can use it as a slingshot. You can use it as a temporary wrist strap. It can serve as an educational toy to teach children counting or uh, to recognize colors. You can make a decorative item or scenery with them. You can make a rubber band ball. It can serve as an eraser and the list is endless. So, so unlock your creativity and start imaginating. All right. I'm moving on to my uh, next activity, which is to understand clarity, okay? Now, on the next slide, you will be asked to read a sentence. And based on your understanding of the sentence, you will have to choose either statement A or B, and you could send your responses to me in the chat box. A says the meaning of the given sentence, the sentence that you will see on the next slide is clear and you can easily understand it. And the statement, the second statement is that the given statement or the sentence is unclear and creates confusion. I hope you've got what you're required to do. So you have to give me your option A or B. And the sentence is, Okay, 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 all right, okay, okay, or yes, all right, I think most of you have a fairly good idea of what ambiguity means, uh, very, yes, okay, a lot of you have said that you will go with option B, which is that it is an ambiguous sentence, now how is it an ambiguous sentence, it can mean several things, okay, so I am seeing a man I mean, through my telescope, I'm seeing a man on a hill. That's one. Okay. Second is I'm seeing, I'm watching a man who's on a hill and he happens to carry a telescope. The third meaning is, well, I'm seeing a man who's standing on a hill and that hill also has a telescope placed on it. Okay. And the fourth is I'm looking at a man through my telescope and sewing him with my telescope, you know cutting him up with my telescope, okay? All right, now, after doing so much, again, a lot of you will ask me this question again, how can we develop our skills further? And uh, my answer to that would be that you can only enhance your uh, communicative competence by practice, practice, and more practice, but uh, never give up, okay? Uh, we can always learn and improve, and that is the beauty of communication. All right, thank you so much, and I will take your questions in the Q&A round. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ruchi, ma'am. This was a beautiful session. So much I have learned in today's session. I'm so sure that the participants have also learned. You have made it so interesting by doing various kinds of activities. And what's new in today's session is about 
those 11 styles, 11 C's of communication. This was something very new for me because we have read about 11, uh, seven C's of communication, four C's of communication, but this 11 C was quite unique. I must appreciate the fact. And also about the style of communication that you focus upon that communication style has a lot to play. How the recipients would take my style of communication is also very important to know. So it is indeed a lovely session to learn a lot from you. So dear audience, as you are also getting the chat box, we would welcome more and more questions from your side. So please keep, keep texting us on Q&A section and please share your questions that you have. We are going to take you now to our Cambridge communication app, which is a solution for you that, okay, we know about communication a lot, but how do we practice communication? As Ruchi Ma'am rightly said, Practice, practice, and practice. What is that key? What should I do to practice? So here we have a solution for you. So I would request my colleague, Priya Kapoor, head publishing, to please explain a little about Cambridge Communication App. Thank you, Richa, and thank you, Professor Kaushik, for your very valuable insights. Uh, I'm Priya, and today I will take you through a brand new offering from CUP's Valise. Give me a second while I share my screen with you, please. Great. Um, so I hope everybody can see my screen. Right. Um, before we begin actually talking about the product, I would like to share some super interesting information. Well, as we do know, um, the world is undergoing a colossal shift and something is doubling within 11 hours. If you know what that is, you can write your answers in the chat and share them with me. Well, uh, we do know that occupations and industries are expanding and contracting at an alarming pace. And the skills needed to keep up in any job are churning for at a much, much faster rate than ever before. Did you know that human average knowledge has been doubling every 13 months, which is close to nine and a half thousand hours. And boy, you'd be surprised to know that this year it's predicted that this volume of information will double every 11 hours. Can you imagine that? That's less than half a day. And what do you think will help you gain and navigate through all this knowledge? If you're thinking communication, well, you're spot on there. Effective communication is a very essential component of professional success, whether it is at the interpersonal, intergroup, intragroup, organizational, or external level. 87% of workers, according to a certain study, believe that it will be essential for them to get training and develop new skills throughout their work life in order to keep up with the changes in the workplace and this is the best and the most flexible way to go about this is through self-directed learning. Well, uh, the sheer magnitude of knowledge of globalization and the accelerating rate of change due to technology basically necessitates a shift in education, which has to move from plateaus of knowing to continuous cycles of learning. And I hope that you would all agree with me there. Well, um, as far as the workplace is concerned, uh, the willingness of employees and also employers, of course, to embrace a shift towards learning is definitely going to impact our ability to address the most pressing challenges that the workforce is facing today. Um, and of course, self-learning is no longer a good to have, but a must have to succeed in today's rapidly evolving world of work. This is not only going to help you assume control of your development, but also accelerate your career in the long run. 
And each one of you will agree with me that one of the most in indispensable skills to have is communication. We cannot ever talk enough about how critical communication skills are. I'd actually go on to say what I say all the time, which is that this is one skill that we need to continuously work on and for which we never really get a completion certificate. Well, we can use science to study why certain techniques are more effective than others, but ultimately communication is more art than science and like mastering any art, it takes practice to sharpen the craft. It is with this requirement in mind of equipping our learners with the most important skill that we are super excited to be sharing information about our new learning solution, which is the Cambridge Communication app with you today. Cambridge Communication app is the latest offering from Cambridge that aims to refine your English language skills in a very fun and engaging way. But before I proceed to talk about the app, we'd like you to know that we're ever so conscious of needs of learners like you, and we have taken utmost care to ensure we bring you what you need. Well, today's walkthrough of what this app offers to you will help you see how this maps to your learning requirement. First, we'll have some quick information about the app and then follow it up with a taster. Now let's look at what this app is all about. Well, um, any great experience involves flexibility and that is what we've done. We've built in all possible flexibility for you. To start with, this is a self-learning app so you can learn and practice anytime, anywhere you want to and can. You have the flexibility of learning English at home or if you're on the move. So what does this app offer you? Well, now it provides to you not just learning content, but also practice content for two language purposes as you see on my screen. That's business English and general English. If you're interested in business English, it offers pacey and topic-based learning with comprehensive coverage of language and skills for business and work life. But if you want to learn English for social interactions, there's learning and practice content for that as well. Well, what is more, each course, which is the business English and the general English course is available at three graded levels, which is foundation, basic and intermediate. So there are these three levels for not just business English, but also for general English. And what you get is a total of 150 units of learning content where each learning unit is for 15 to 20 minutes seat time. Now, what does seat time mean? Seat time means the average time that you will take to complete one unit. Apart from these 150 units spanning across Business English and General English, you also get corresponding 150 tests and each test is a five to seven minute seat time. Now, let us move on to have a sneak peek at the app. Here is what one of the two courses looks like of, on the app. Uh, these are some screenshots from Business English, and you see some units of three levels of the course here. But as I mentioned when I was on the previous slide, there are three levels available for General English too. So this is just to give you a quick look of what the app looks like at the first glance. Now I would like to take you through a learning unit in the app. This one is from basic level. We just go through it to see what it is like when you use it, use the app and uh, go through a unit. So those are the three module for business English. We're going through a session called A Day in My Life. This very much looks like your WhatsApp, does it not? So uh, it is basically the chat style format. And this is how we begin. There are some questions or some uh, sentences or some pieces of information uh, post by the chatbot and then there are responses that the learner gives. You will have to bear with us about that small red dot at the bottom because we recorded this video for you. 
So as a learner, I'm posed a question and I look at the three options that are given to me and then I choose one of the three responses, which is informal business lunch. And this is some feedback that the bot gives to me and it tells me what I'm going to learn today. I say that this sounds pretty exciting and I love meeting new people. And then I'm introduced to somebody called Nandita. You see an image there and I'm given a scenario. So I look at that scenario and then I listen to an audio based on that scenario. I'm also posed a question so I can listen to this audio as many times as I want to. So how does this audio listening help to me? So um, it basically gives you an idea of what to say. So it's not just active learning. So you're not just answering a question by listening to this audio, but you're also learning what to say in which context, how to say it, what grammatical structure to use, uh, what your tonality should be like, what are the appropriate words to use. So there's a lot of passive learning that also happens. Now you're also seeing some green color on the right side of the screen. What are these green responses? Well, when the bot poses to me a question as a learner and I respond, uh, if my answer is correct, I see that the bubble turns green. Otherwise, it turns a big pink. And I know that my answer is not right. Well, what do you do if you don't go right through a particular unit? You always have the option of going back to the unit and redoing it all over again. Um, as you see, there are audios and there are also caution notes that we provided. Uh, well, what are caution notes? Um, these are little notes that you just saw, uh, which basically alert you to the common errors that we make when we speak English or maybe any other language. So that is the purpose of caution notes. So uh, you will find that there are caution notes aplenty in the learning units and um, you're posed with more scenarios and look at another caution note popping up on your screen. So what do you say? One of the options is correct. Uh, two actually are correct. Uh, the other two are incorrect. This also tells you what to say, what not to say, which word usage is right, how to go about regular actions. In this case, for example, uh, you're asked to preempt responses. So see, it turned pink, like I just told you. So this one, this response that I is incorrect and that's why it says and also gives me feedback so you not just get a right or wrong for your response but you also get instantaneous feedback and after I have uh, spoken or after I listen to an audio I also get another audio to listen to to see what is right and what's not so there are more questions to talk about other things uh, with reference to the topic and there are various questions that are popping up on screen here. I'm told how to use uh, certain words correctly. And I'm also asked if I want to try describing my job. I'm asked if I want to speak. And if I say yes, what do I get? Let's see. I get the option to record my voice and play it again. So this was a very brief taster of what a learning unit looks like in the app. Now let us quickly look at some features of this app and how they benefit you as a learner. Well, I hope you noticed that this app provides to you learning content in very short bursts. We're not just limited to that. Um, I mean, practice content too is in the form of short tests. So these are very short tests and I've already spoken about the seat time for each, the learning unit and the test. Well, all of this is based on the premise of bite-sized learning because long sessions of self-learning are passe now. The idea is to provide small learning units with just the necessary amount of information. And why is that? So as to help you achieve a certain learning goal. 25 short units in each level cover important listening, speaking, reading and writing skills for business or general English, depending on the course that you choose to go through. There are also embedded grammar and vocabulary inputs. 
plus caution notes as you just saw in the taster. Caution notes basically alert you to common errors, as I just said, and tell you how to avoid them. Also, if you noticed, the approach that we've employed here is pretty communicative. Through the chatbot methodology, you are presented with contexts that you are likely to encounter in real work-related scenarios or situations in social life and business life. The inputs are brief and to the point. This is because we do understand that the skills required and the knowledge gained are only valuable to the extent that can be practically applied when called for. As you chat through a unit, you are taken through language functions, notions and structures that are required to navigate through such situations. And of course, you progress through the learning scenario seamlessly. Well, the sessions are not didactic and focus on the elements which are important for you to be able to communicate effectively. And you can repeat a unit or a test as many times as you'd like. Whether it's the foundation, the basic or the intermediate level of business English or general English that you're going through, you will encounter level appropriate functions of language, vocabulary, text types, complexity of structures and themes, and of course, with loads of examples. And as you've seen, the navigation through the app is pretty intuitive, so it's very easy to navigate through it. You're also sure to find the content very relevant, interesting, and gripping. And also, as you must have noticed, the content has loads of digital learning objects such as images, audios, and then there's the voice recording feature too for reflective learning. Now, what is reflective learning? It basically, it's self-explanatory, and it basically means that you reflect on what you spoke or how you said it. So you can record your own voice and you can play it back to you, also compare it with the sample audio or the model audio that we provided to you. So you can see where you need to improve in terms of the content of what you're saying, um, your pronunciation perhaps, your tonality, the words that you're using, the sequence of words, etc. Now I would like to give you a quick glimpse of the themes from the Business English course. Here is a quick look for um, foundation, basic and intermediate. You will see that uh, a lot of topics that you will come across when it comes to business English are covered. So whether it is about arranging a meeting, delivering a product, um, what do you say before you order something? Um, you know, what do you say when you talk about having problems with certain machines that you use at work, like the photocopier or the scanner, or how to understand everyday messages at the workplace, how you talk profits, how you talk, uh, you know, business relationships that are changing drastically these days, how you talk uh, when you describe a product. Um, well, what do you say when you want to give an opinion or how to be more polite than ever? What do you say when you are uh, uh, saying goodbye to somebody or when you are on a call with customers and clients? You will see a variety of themes and topics covered here. And under each of these themes or topics, there will be various functions of the language that are covered. There are inputs given on listening, speaking, reading, writing, like I mentioned before. And there are loads of inputs on grammar, vocabulary, and the app is replete with caution notes as well. Moving on, a quick look at the topics or themes that we have for the general English course. So these will cover everything that you need to speak or to express yourself appropriately in social life. Some of these themes, if I read them out to you, include talking about certain things uh, at a gym, what do you say when you talk about the weather, what do you say when you make small talk, um, when you talk to a friend, when you're going to a doctor's, um, you talk about professions, you talk about what you're gonna be shopping for today. Um, well, what do you say when you uh, have just heard the news and want to discuss it with a friend or a family member, you talk about your experiences, you talk about what you can or cannot do, about managing money, about making an impressive presentation. Um, well, how to talk to somebody who's at the reception of a hotel. So there is a plethora of content that you can go through.
Now, how do you go about accessing this app? Well, going about learning with this app is as easy as Snap. For now, some content for business English, which is 10 units plus 10 practice tests from each level is available to you and free of charge until the end of this month. So you should grab this opportunity to explore the app, learn and practice you will get about 15 to 20 hours of content, I repeat, free of charge for some time. Feel free to share this app with friends or batchmates and encourage them to take advantage of this. The app is available on Google Play Store to download from. You go to Play Store, you type in Cambridge Communication, and voila, you have it on your mobile. Uh, this app logo that you see on the top right will help you identify the app. This is the logo that you should see on Google Play Store for you to be able to download it from there. Also, as much as we value you as learners benefiting from the app, we would love to hear from you on it. We want you to feed us back with your views, ideas, and suggestions. Uh, doing that is fairly simple, I'd say. You just need to go to the share feedback section from the main menu after you've downloaded the app and give us feedback. I'm going to show you a very short video on how to do that. So this is your app. You click on the hamburger menu, which is the three lines on the top left, and you go to share feedback, which is the penultimate item at the bottom. And you come to the feedback form. It's a very simple feedback form and you may even choose to give us feedback anonymously if that's what you'd like. But we'd really, really love to hear from you on what it is like for you as a learner to go through this app. This can help us continually improve the offering and we'd love to have you partnering with us to make the app even better aligned to your learning needs as we go on. So thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed going through the session and are all geared up and excited to experience this novel way of learning. Thank you once again. Thank you so much, Priya. It was really insightful. Everybody is very excited to download the app. It's just the click away. I will still stick to the point. Practice makes the man perfect. And especially Ruchi Ma'am focused about practice, practice, and practice. How do we start the practice? Dear audience, it's just the click away. Believe me, it's just the click away. You have to pick your phone and download the app from the Play Store. And there on, you can start your practice. So let me ask you one question now. May I ask you a question? Of course, yes, I think you would say that. So the question that I want to ask you, are you ready for anything with Cambridge? Your answer should come as a yes or no. If it is a yes, we have more surprises to share with you. If it is a no, that's okay. Again, are you ready for anything with Cambridge? So I'll wait for 30 seconds just to see how many yes are there. We are live on Facebook, we are live here. So we have almost 500 participants. Right now, let me just check out how many are saying yes here. <clears throat> Wow, that's amazing. We just got 100 replies in the chat box. This is going really great. Count on, I'm just counting on five more. One, two, three, four, and five. Wonderful. Since you are almost ready for anything with Cambridge, so let me start with the first thing that I can offer you. The first thing that I can offer you is taking up your questions. Yes, that's the time of the question answer round. Dear audience, after Q&A, we would be going through the feedback form process, that is to take your valuable feedback and serve you better and better always. So we are starting with Q&A round first, as we promised you anything worth anything for you right away, just a click away. So here I would uh, request our Kaushik ma'am and Priya Kapoor for taking up the questions. I would be asking questions related to CCA from Priya and questions related to business communication or communication in general to Ruchi ma'am. So my first question is to Ruchi ma'am. Uh, here we have two, three participants saying the same thing. 
So I would just uh, merge two questions together so you can answer that, ma'am. Sure. Uh, the question is, how can I improve my fluency? That is the question by Amanpreet Kaur. Related to the same question, a person says, Devika says that speaking in crowd is a problem for me. And then we are also working on by reading books, but reading books is not all time health, helpful. So what would you suggest here, ma'am? All right, Amunpreet, and sorry, I missed the other name, uh, if you have it. Devika. Devika, uh, nice to interact with you. My suggestion to the two of you and perhaps more participants who have this question in mind, but have not really asked it here, is that fluency will only come with practice and uh, never kind of plan uh, something very big, go step by step. My suggestion to you would be to pick up any topic that interests you and, and start, as I said, start small. It could be something like what you enjoyed doing in a day, all right? And plan a 10 second uh, response, you know, just like uh, as if you're speaking to yourself and record it on your phone, okay? And Trust you me, you do it on a regular basis. After a month, not only will your fluency become better, you will become, in terms of speed, you know, you will become a better uh, speaker because what you could cover in the beginning in 10 seconds and what you can cover uh, at the end of the month in say about 20, 30 seconds, there'll be a marked difference in terms of content. There's certainly many more activities that we do um, with, you know, in our workshops with participants that are aimed specifically at improving speaking skills. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now the other question is by Vijay, again to you, ma'am. How can we communicate with the reluctant counterparts? It sometimes become difficult. You see, the only thing that you can do is motivate people to participate. But sometimes this uh, hesitation arises because your uh, you know, um, uh, person that you're communicating with does not have uh, enough, you know, uh, language skills. And the only thing I would suggest is it's, it's pretty all right to code switch, you know, I mean, for instance, I'm talking to you. And if I feel that you are not very comfortable with English, rather than intimidate you by speaking whatever I have to say in English, I'll say, all right, hum aisa bhi kar sakte hai. perhaps this is a good idea. Aapko kya lagta hai? Would you agree with me? So you are not directly uh, putting any pressure on the other participants that they have to, because it's okay if you code switch. And gradually you have to, you know, stop that scaffolding, that help, and you will see that your learners will themselves start using English. So if the Commun if, if the content or if the message is getting communicated, but the uh, language is a little flawed, it's okay to begin with. That's at least what we do with our learners. Thank you so much, ma'am. The third question is also very interesting. It is by Jushmi Gogoi. So this question is, I'm just reading as it is because I really like the question. As we all are aware of the fact that English language can open a lot of opportunities for us, but it is important to notice that in the vernacular medium schools where English is treated as merely a subject, how can we give justice to the larger part of the pupils who were enrolled in those schools individually and collaboratively? I think that's a very, very important question and very correctly stated that uh, the state of affairs in, uh, you know, schools uh, that have instruction in the vernacular languages, of course, English is sidetracked. But the point is, you can use multilingualism as a source, as a means to enhance uh, English communication skills. And so much of research seems to be going on. But the point is that it, the, the process will be gradual. You know, the problem with our education system is that it's all product or result based. So you have exams, 
okay now the exam will decide what the progress of the learner in a particular year was and that's very unfortunate because language the beauty of learning a language is to enjoy the process of learning now if that element is missing which is certainly missing in government schools uh, i think uh, you know the teachers have to be passionate to uh, expose their learners beyond the classroom to the language uh, to english language i mean have i answered the question sorry i was on mute sorry for that So I was saying that the question answer round is going really interesting. The question and the answers are very crisp and to the point, and that's great that we are taking up more questions like this. This is again a good question, and it relates to me. So people like me, we need we explain a lot about things about the same thing again and again. Maybe because I'm from the teaching profession, or people like me in the teaching profession, we just make sure that the people are understanding what we are trying to say. So here the question comes: That how could we be short? with our sentences during communication be it oral or written or do we require to be short out yeah sorry could you repeat that how do we shorten how do we shorten our sentences during communication uh, be it a written communication or oral communication or is it also necessary to be shorten or is it good to explain things see i think uh, i i wouldn't be able to answer it without a context you know there are times when explanation is necessary and there are times when that explanation becomes unnecessary so i i will refuse to give a blanket answer to that however having said that there are two things that one has to keep in mind when the interaction is oral okay there is very little until and unless you're a very very good user of the language it is very difficult to decide as you are speaking how concise you should be however that can be done while writing you know when you write out a draft you can always and this is what we do when we write research articles when we you know publish uh, we keep on revising the draft and we keep on uh, you know sort of um, editing it and making it better so certainly it can be done in writing but uh, as i said depends on the context that's right ma'am i think environmental factors and many other factors plays a very important role here that to whom you are talking what is that situation that's a valid answer in fact so now my next question is to priya this is about app and i'm reading it out does the app provide speaking samples in different indian accents of indian english what is the focus on indian communication or any standard english this is by ranjini Okay, hi Ranjini. Uh, well, to answer your question, um, as far as the audio inputs through the app are concerned, uh, these are all Indian English. Um, we have tried to bring in some variety with different accents, but these are primarily meant for Indian learners. And um, uh, Richa, uh, could you please repeat the uh, second part of the question? Sure. so i'll just repeat the question again does the app provide the speaking samples in different yes. indian accents okay yes. what is the focus on and is it the indian communication or any standard right. english right right so uh it is not about indian communication it is about uh communication in various contexts now these could be within the country or outside especially when it comes to business english we have ensured that um we have covered not just scenarios that people might face here but also face with uh speaking to people in other countries and in international business contexts however it does not mean that the accents are difficult to understand or uh, the content is not easy to understand it's all been made very simple and very easy to understand and assimilate um you will find that there are inputs uh, given uh, and there is also a lot of explanation around it so um it should be easy for you to understand we'd actually like to hear from you uh, you know after you experience going through some 15 to 20 hours through the app as to what it was like for you yeah thank you priya so now the next question is again to ma'am ruchi ma'am 
This question is quite generic in nature. It includes both the business communication as well as general communication. Because today we all use different kind of apps to communicate with our colleagues and our friends in general. Here it is focusing on WhatsApp. So WhatsApp is now become, has become a tool for business as well to communicate. People sometimes with all right intention don't know how to make use of the emojis. So do you have like some kind of explanation or views on non-verbal communication also, particularly for the use of emojis? Well, uh, I would say communication evolves. So there is nothing like uh, this is right and this is wrong. Uh, there was a time when we at least could never imagine uh, saying a hello to our lecturers. It was always a very prim and proper good morning, good afternoon. And look how, uh, you know, times have changed because when I meet my students, the warmth that they exude when they do a loud hello to me, uh, you know, running down the corridor is, is very, uh, you know, uh, very nice. So uh, maybe we've not come to a stage where the use of emojis is done on a regular basis, especially as you said, in business interactions. I'm yet to hear from my friends who are in the corporate. Um, but as I said, again, it is very contextual in the sense that, for instance, uh, if I am interacting with a colleague and there is some familiarity between us and it is a conversation, it is, it is a chat that is happening uh, and sort of varying between uh, professional and personal, yes, I may use emojis, but imagine if I'm writing to my boss saying that I will have to take leave today, a sick leave today because I'm running temperature. Now, I can't make an emoji like this and send it that I'm unwell. I mean, that's unacceptable. So as I said, the context will define the use of emojis as well. Thank you so much, ma'am. That's uh, actually, I was also looking for the answer. Thank you so much. So uh, on a daily basis, ma'am, like how to work or polish our pronunciation skills? So dear audience, this is the last question that we are taking up for today. And this question is a very generic uh, question. It is for everybody, for people like me in the corporate, people in the college, people in school, who really want to polish their skills on a daily basis. And it includes all S LSRW skills. So how can we work upon? What are the few things that we could do on a daily basis other than using CCA as an app? First of all, uh, I did see uh, many participants, you know, asking me this question uh, in the chat box, uh, which pronunciation is correct and which is incorrect. Okay, so earlier it used to be the UK pronunciation and the US pronunciation, but now uh, in the times of world Englishes, I think it's like uh, an amalgamation of all kinds of pronunciations, okay? Uh, now, uh, so there's nothing like correct or incorrect. However, you can't be grossly wrong in the sense that you can't pronounce a uh, table uh, as table. That is uh, incorrect pronunciation. But how you roll your tongue, like you do, do it like native speakers, or you do it a little differently like we Indians do, it's, it's perfectly all right. Now, coming back to uh, your question, uh, Richa, uh, that how do we uh, improve our pronunciation or for that matter, all the four language skills? I will say that, you know, you have to do a lot of things. For instance, the first thing is uh, get more exposure to language. OK, uh, when I was young and I wanted to improve my English, uh, I was uh, informed by my teachers, well, listen to news broadcast. OK, and we would do that. But right now, I think there are so many avenues available. For instance, I wish I had this kind of an app when I was a student. I, I would love to go through it. OK, uh, there are TED talks, uh, there are videos, there are authentic materials. So language is all around you the only thing is to make a conscious effort and the moment you do that i'm sure it, the 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 improvement will be very gradual but it will definitely be there uh thank you for this tip ma'am so related to this because uh, this would be definitely a question of many people here and the question is 
we want to use language on a daily basis. We want to use language in the peer group, to the teachers, to our heads, to the bosses. But we have a fear. We have a fear, what if, if we make the mistake? What if this person would judge me? So we have what if, what if factors due to which we are not able to come out what we really feel inside our heart. So what as a motivator, what would you suggest to the audience here? Okay, so if I were to answer that question by posing a counter question. Uh, how did we feel the first time round when we took exams? Were we very confident? We shivered. We shivered. Yeah. And we still do. Yes. So, uh, so if I were to give this imaginary hypothetical answer that, oh no, you practice and you, the, the fear will go away. I'm sorry, that wouldn't happen. Uh, if you feel nervous, I think that's a very positive sign. However, if that nervousness is leading to your not being able to speak, I think that's what we have to address. And as I said, uh, you will have to practice. You know, I'm sure you will have a friend, you will have a colleague, you will have somebody in the family where the inhibition will not be there because you can be yourself. So, you know, for instance, if I am talking in incorrect or my limited uh, knowledge of English with my uh, daughter, I don't think she's going to judge me. So I think begin there. And once you gain a little more confidence, start using, start speaking in English with your friends, with your colleagues. As I said, the process is very gradual, but it is surely going to make a change. Wow. It answers. It really very well answers. So yes, this is very important to start. Starting is the key and then practice, practice is the key. Don't worry about judgments, people will judge you. But what you have to do is keep pushing yourself, keep motivating yourself and you would be a better speaker like Ruchi ma'am today, say Priya. We never know, we can be better as them. So uh, yes, dear audience, we tried our level best to take as many questions as possible, but we are very sorry we could not take all of them because of the paucity of time. But we must tell you that you're free to write to us anytime to our email ID, that is india at the, at the rate cambridge.org. india at the rate cambridge.org. You can write anytime to us and we would be happy to address all these questions. Now, moving ahead, I would now like to welcome our uh, honorable guest here, Dr. Poonam Agarwal, recipient of UGC Research Award and a professor at PG Government College for Girls, Sector 42, Chandigarh. Dr. Poonam Magarwal is an erudite scholar and a keen researcher. Dr. Agarwal has been a distinguished academician with more than 32 years of teaching experience and an unparalleled contribution to education. She has held various administrative positions like NAC coordinator, in charge new courses, nodal officer AISHE and NIRF to name a few. Welcome ma'am. Thank you for your kind words. Really appreciate that. Good afternoon everyone. It gives me immense pleasure to be a part of today's session on skills for social and business communication. In fact, communication skills help us in many ways, from professional career to social gatherings to our family life. In today's hectic world, we rely heavily on information sharing, resulting in greater emphasis being placed on having good communication skills. Good communication skills are important to understand, process, and deliver the information quickly and accurately. Being able to communicate effectively is a vital life skill and should not be overlooked. Although the concept sounds so basic, so simple, yet many of us lack good communication skills, thereby losing so much in life. So it will not be overemphasizing if I say communication skills are among the most in-demand skills to be a good employee, a good employer, a good senior, a good subordinate, a good customer, a good vendor, what to say of a good friend and a good family member. Keeping in view the importance of communication skills, 
more so in this difficult time of COVID-19, where everything to everyone is online, holding webinars like this are so pertinent and apt. And for this, I must congratulate Cambridge University Press and my host college, Postgraduate Government College for Girls, Sector 42 Chandigarh, for their such timely action. The relevance of these series of webinars is quite evident from the fact that we have many registrations. I was told it is more than a thousand per session. For this, I appreciate the efforts of the organizers and their proactive and prompt initiative, taking into view the needs and requirements of the learners of today. I also appreciate and congratulate the learners for their responsiveness and willingness to be a part of this set webinar. Today, when everything has shifted from offline to online media, learning about self-directed learning, developing functional skills for effective communication has assumed all the more importance. Communicating with students in an online environment requires a little more thought and planning than communicating in on-ground or face-to-face -face environment due to the absence of body language in online environment. Hence, a greater and focused emphasis needs to be given to the communication skills. I'm sure Dr. Deepti Gupta, Dr. Rizwan, Professor Ruchi Kaushik did a marvelous job in sharing their experience and knowledge on various facets of communication skills. I really appreciate the efforts of the organizers in bringing such learned speakers on board to complement the relevant topics. Priya, congratulations. You were excellent in explaining the Cambridge Communication app so lucidly, both the active and the passive aspects of it. I would like to suggest to our participants to continue their learning process to expand their knowledge base. You all have to always be on the lookout for more wings to sharpen your aims. Lifelong learning is the only constant variable in this dynamic world. With such webinars by Cambridge University Press and college like ours, you have perfect platform to learn while sitting in the comfort of your homes. Congratulations everybody for that. In the end, I would like to conclude by saying, keep learning, keep growing, keep developing good communication skills and keep achieving greater heights because the motto of our college is higher still. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your kind words. Thanks a lot for your presence also. So again, one question to you, dear audience. Imagine yourself as a user. Imagine yourself that you are that end user for whom we do everything, whom, for whom I do everything, for whom Cambridge does everything, you are that one very special for us. So what is the question? You have to answer it as option. You have to answer it as one or two. If you're, you agree with one, you write one in the chat box. You agree with two, you write two in the chat box. The question to you is, if given a chance to know something, to know about the product, to know about the app, absolutely for free, would you go for this option? Or would you say, I would better pay and then know the product and then think about paying more to buy the product? This is the option two. Paying and knowing the product is a better option. Or if you are given a chance to avail the service free, of course, you would go for option one. So let me just see the chat box in 30 seconds. I'll come to the conclusion what the audience wants. Wow. So it's really exciting to see that. We are seeing so many one, 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 one. That is the reply. So see, I told you that we are ready to do anything for you. Are you ready to be with us, to be ready for everything and anything that Cambridge offers to you? And this is the second thing that we are offering you. We are offering this app to you absolutely free until August 31st. You still have time, you still have 10 days to know this app, to understand that how much is it helping me in improving my business communication skills or my general English skills. So please avail the service when it is available for you. 
Okay. Now, the next thing which I want to tell you, your feedback is always precious to us because we want to serve you always better than before. So here I would request you that you are given a link on the chat box to please fill the feedback form. And once you fill the feedback form, you will be getting a certificate about for attending this webinar in your email ID. So please go through the link and fill the feedback form. As we discussed about this feedback form, my colleague Priya also mentioned about the feedback of the app. Audience, this is really very precious for us. Why do I say so? See, Cambridge is continuously involved in doing so many research programs at a global level. Whatever product that you see from Cambridge today, it comes after so much of research process. And how do we get this primary data? We get this primary data through you, your genuine feedback. We would really appreciate if you would just use this app for a week or 10 days and then go to the feedback form and fill the genuine feedback. Your feedback will help us to serve you better each time. So I wish that everybody who is downloading the app will be filling the feedback form. Now I would request my dear ma'am, Preeti Sharda ma'am, for a vote of thanks. Thank you, Richa. Thank you once again. It was a wonderful session and I really enjoyed it. And so we are finishing up with the series of webinars. We did three webinars on first on 13th, second on 18th and today 20th. And I'm uh, really becoming nostalgic. We, uh, we are not going to meet again. But uh, give me a promise that Cambridge is going to collaborate more with us and we uh, we do more such programs. Uh, it is really a privilege for me to propose the vote of the thanks to this. It is indeed first time in the history of my college that we have uh, a, we have done a webinar on such a great platform and we received more than 3,000 uh, registration and I, I think around 2,000 people have uh, been part of us, uh, maybe through the Zoom platform or through the Facebook. Actually, our program is also uh, live on the Facebook and it is being uploaded on uh, the YouTube also. And uh, my deepest thanks to Professor Pundam uh, Agarwa for being the chief guest for this dedicated session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I would I also like to thank the uh, principal of my college for allowing me to do this series of webinars in collaboration with Cambridge University Press. And I would extend my thanks to Cambridge University Press for collaborating with us and choosing us for this series of webinars. I would like to uh, thank my principal, Madam Professor Binu Doda, for the insightful address on the inauguration day, and Professor Vijay Kumar to address the audience on 18th, 18th August. Thank you, sir and madam. I would like to thank Professor Tukti Gupta, Professor Rizwan, and Professor Ruchi Koshik for uh, giving the for taking the sessions on communication skills and making the audience feel that they can also learn communication skills and they can uh, improve their communication skills. Thank you all. I would like to thank Mr. Garun and uh, Priya for uh, making the cap, uh, app easy for us and we will definitely uh, try this app. A request to Cambridge, can you extend this free access date maybe for a month? Because we recently did the webinars and maybe uh, students were not aware that this, uh, this app is available for them. If they get a chance to uh, have the access and to see the app, it will be a great, it will be a great help for them. It's a request from my side and a request also that whenever we uh, do the demonstration on the apps, if the apps are, if the real-time demo of the app can be done, it 
can also help the students. I thank all the faculty members who have joined this webinar. It was indeed great of them to be part of this webinar. An event of this dimension cannot happen overnight. It was a great teamwork. Me, Richa, and uh, we were all the time on WhatsApp or Zoom, deciding about the facts, figures, and about the planning. Thank you, both of you, Richa and me. And I would also extend my th thanks to the other team members, uh, Samad, Varun, Ridhima, Preeti, Ashish, for being there and because I'm, I'm so grateful to you guys that because of you that this webinar went so smooth. Technology fails lots of time, but we were there and we were very confident. Thank you everyone. We will be doing more of such programs. Be connected with us. Thank you everyone from the core of my heart. Stay safe and have a nice day. Thank you so much, Preeti ma'am, for your kind words. It was indeed a very beautiful journey. We had no time and we there was always work, work, work. But this really helped us. Like all the team members here who did an amazing job, be it back end or be it on stage, it is worth appreciating. So thank you so much for your kind words. And you know, audience, I asked you one question a little before. And that question was, are you ready for anything with Cambridge? And you said, yes. So here I received one more good news for you from one of my colleagues who's giving a global news and you are the first one to hear that in this live session. What is this news? Let me just read with you because I have just received on my WhatsApp message. It says that calling all English language teachers, so this is especially for English language teachers, calling all English language teachers, join us for our three day online experience. The Cambridge Live Experience will give you confidence and tools that you need to make your return to class that a little bit easier. This is Cambridge Live. You can register yourself anytime. The session is from 8th of September to 10th of September. So congratulations. We are getting back to you for what you want from our side. Beside this, we have many other videos, many other webinars coming exclusively for you. We would be updating you since we have your email IDs with us now. You would be updated about the latest happening, what's happening in the Cambridge for the audience. Also, you're always free to visit our website. That is www.cambridge.org. In this website, any seeker who wants to be better than before, better than right now, you can always go there. You have so much material for yourself to go through the ELT products that suits you the most. So we would be waiting to see you on our website, on our webinars that we are conducting from time to time basis. Thank you so much to all the dignitaries present here. Thank you, my back and support team for the amazing job done for the series of these webinars that we had. Thank you for all the seniors and team. Thank you to all the colleagues. Thank you for your very valuable time. Thank you.